So we can now use this tiling scheme to start to control some objects that we want to actually see projected to our viewport. Um, we're generating three tiles right now and I want to create a single bar chart so I can be very specific with which tile I want to have my my bar chart sort of populated in. So I'm going to just go to the sets tab and I'm going to find the list item component. I'm going to pull out list item and you can see that I'm uh, selecting this lower uh, this lower left hand corner of this hypothetical viewport that we're designing in Grasshopper. Um, and if I zoom in on the on the component and add in two more indices as the output, I, I'll have the lower the lower left, the middle left, and the upper left of my viewport selected. So these are going to represent my three available uh, viewport boundaries for my, my components, my tiles and widgets. So we're going to use the first index. I'm just going to populate the, the first output here of my get item component and populate into that for bounds. And now we need to start to establish some values. Like there's no values yet controlling our bar chart. Um, we can see that we have inputs for values. We can supply names to the categories of those values. Uh, if we have a clustered bar chart, we can include periods or groupings of values. Um, we can give this chart a title. Um, we can start to really stylize this with different fonts and, and color palettes and so on. But the, the minimum amount of inputs that you need, you need the boundaries and you need values. So let's just create a random set of values. We're going to go to the sets tab and under sequence we're going to find the random number generator that's provided with Grasshopper. I'm going to just pull that out. And we'll see that it's just got a domain from 0 to 1. We don't really need to modify that for this in a test case. Um, we only have one value being generated, so what I might want to do here is just create a kind of slider that lets us control the number of values. I'm just going to go to params, find a slider, double click on the slider, enter in a value of like 50, so we have a number of values being created. I'm going to hit N for integer, click OK, and connect that in for N. And I'm going to crank this up to about 20. Right, so we have 20 values being generated. If I hover over R, we see that we've got 20 random values between a domain of 0 and 1. So I'm going to take that output and plug it into values. And because we have our widget connected to the draw objects into our heads up display, we automatically see a chart being generated for us in the lower left hand corner of our viewport. All right, so if I start navigating around my Rhino scene, you know, kind of zooming in and out of the grid, see that's now projected um, to that to that part of my viewport and we can kind of see where that's being oriented in this kind of sketch that's being created in, in Grasshopper. So if I go all the way back and start playing with my padding um, and my widths um, and my heights, um, you can start to see that that chart is now responding to that kind of tiling setup. So this isn't telling us too much, you know, we've kind of generated some colorful bars, but there's not a lot of information being provided about what these what these values are. Um, so this is where we can start to satisfy some of these other inputs. So one of the things that we might want to have are a series of categories. Um, the categories themselves could be a, a, you know, a list of names, like a list of spaces, or um, you know, uh, days of the month, or you know, what have you. Uh, they can be just about any, any kind of data you can kind of design within Grasshopper with, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to generate a list of labels that that can sit at the bottom of our chart uh, that indicate what each of these columns is referring to. So the way that I can do that is um, I'm going to just generate a, a formatted list of names. So what I can do is go to the sets tab, we're going to go to text, and we're going to find the format component. And I'm going to uh, just create a little bit of a format string with a panel here. I'm going to call it um, uh, value open bracket zero close bracket 
right? So there's like a little bit of a prefix and then we're gonna populate a, a series of numbers there. I connect that into the F of format. And now we need a list of numbers that is equal to the number of values that we're generating for the random component. So I can go over to sets and we're gonna find the series component and I'm going to you know, connect my number that's controlling how many values I'm generating out of the random seed. I'm going to connect that right into the C of count. And you can see that I'm now generating values 0 through through 19. That, that should be good enough for, for our purposes at the moment, purposes for demonstration. So we're now getting labels, value 0, value 1, value, value 2, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to connect that into categories. And you kind of see we get this mishmash of text. We haven't quite formatted that text yet to be to be legible yet. Um, so I'm going to leave that right now, and then we're going to you know circle back here and do some some further refinement. We can also add a title to the chart. So I'm just going to go in here and find a a panel. I'm going to call this the uh, chart demo. I'm going to create a panel there with the, the text chart demo in it. I'm going to funnel that into the chart demo or funnel that into the title there. It's also going to ask us for the category title and the value title. Now these represent the different axes, right? So category is going to be this, the, you know, what, what are these categories representing down here? And then what is our, our value representing along the, the Y axis of our chart? So I can just quickly create a couple of examples here. I'm just going to just for the purposes of simplicity, I'm going to call the, the category title values. So there's some random values down there. You can see that we've got a little title now along that x-axis of the chart in our viewport. And then we can alter the value title and we can just call it, um, you know, uh, ratio. I think it's a percent sign or something like that give it some give it some meaning there and you can see that we're now populating that y-axis with some values so this is a bit of a mess right this is this is not you know clearly formatted uh, yet we're not kind of getting all the data that we want we have kind of the the, the elements that we need uh, to make this perhaps look like a nice chart so what what we can do now is the the charting component has a special menu and option set that we can then uh, set a couple of settings and you know ch adjust things like font size and so on.